on, this is going to be a different episode this time, and the reason why it's going to be different is because I have a very special friend. Freaking camera is fucking freezing, but let's just... Hi, Jerry. How are you? Guillermo. How are you? <laughs> nice to see you again, pal. Nice to see you. Let me check your focus real quick. So, Jerry and I, let's, let's just switch. Jerry and I, we know each other for a while. Uh, we, like, not necessarily from... People know me on this thing from the toy world and they don't know me that much for the dark side dark side yeah spanish but language television spanish language <laughs> television they go you do tv and i go yeah what type and i go well like univision and telemundo stuff and they go like oh <laughs> no i know people whenever i whenever I, I meet people on airplanes whatever and they go what do you do i go i'm a, I'm a tv writer mm -hmm. and they're like oh anything i've seen i'm like you ever heard of a show called uh, ozark they're like yeah i didn't write that show <laughs> <laughs> in my case, in my case, it was hilarious. My my camera is speaking of my camera is freezing. Let's see. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. In my case, it was hilarious because uh, there was a time that I was looking for a job in LA, mm -hmm. and it was I, that's where I find out like there were people who were like googling stuff, and they go like, "Oh, so you work in you know this millennial kid from yeah. San Bernardino?" And they go like, "Oh, like oh, Sabado Gigante. That's not what we do here." <laughs> And I go, yeah, and that's not what I did either. <laughs> Show's been on the air 50 years, kid. You right, know, it's like. Right. And then you start. But, but of course, but they go and put it on YouTube. And yeah. It's, it's, it's a different of, world, dude. It's taken out of context. It's a different world. So, how you mean? Tell me a little bit for my. So, my, my, my audience is mostly toy base and collector yeah. base. So, tell me a little bit about yourself. I'm a collector. Uh, not so much toys. Uh, I used to collect comics when I was a kid. That's the box that. Uh, I brought in for yeah, you to. We need to talk about this for you to evaluate. Yeah. That kind of blew your mind a little bit. Yeah, yeah. but we'll do one unboxing here a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I'm a collector of old stuff. You know, old man stuff. I like antiques. I like old oh, old man stuff. Yeah, bro. Because I'm a writer, so I collect like old typewriters from the 20s and and like really really old school stuff like that. I love old signs. You know, I love I love stuff that doesn't exist anymore, like advertising for smoking. Mm -hmm. stuff like that you know so whenever they're, they're, they don't exist for a reason they're yeah not. no of course <laughs> naturally but I, it's just funny to me how before they would have a pregnant lady with a cigarette on, a, on an ad saying you know the best flavor for when you're you know carrying oh, yeah those things those those things from the 50s are, are wild yeah they, yeah, they yeah. are even they're not they won't fly in today's world no no not even close and they shouldn't no of course there not. are things like no your woman needs to be in the kitchen the yeah yeah yeah. no it's super misogynistic it's crazy bro no it's crazy it's crazy so anything that's weird outdated sign my, my 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 house is full of like old signs for smoking for uh telephone booths and public phones you know only five cents and stuff that doesn't really exist anymore and my kids i have little kids i'm an old man but i have you have young kids i started late Listen to it. i'm an old man yeah yeah so uh like my kids are i have a 15 year old and a couple of seven year old twins mm -hmm. and they're like what is that you know and I'm, beautiful kids beautiful kids thank you and Stevan is a genius he's like a little genius you talk to a guy and he sounds like an old man yeah he does but he's not he does he does <laughs> he's a brilliant brilliant kid he is he's a beautiful kid and uh he just freaks out to the stuff that i have because he's like people really used to do this but i'm like yeah bro they used to Pregnant ladies used to smoke, and people used to people used to smoke. I told them, I told them that I'm old enough to where I used to. I've smoked a cigarette in an airplane. Me too. Yeah. Me too. They and just I, made you sit in the back. Right. No. Well, I remember the I seats re had little ashtrays in the correct. middle. Correct. I remember. Correct. That some planes, when you take like a short flight, yeah, like I don't know, fucking North Carolina to whatever, or in Texas, like from Dallas to Laredo right. you or can whatever. You still see those yeah. seats with the, yeah. the ashtray and. The, and I remember taking a, I think it was, I think it was Miami Paris, something like that, like a long ass flight. Yeah, yeah. And I remember, see if my camera helps. There you go. Hopefully it doesn't freeze and it froze. Never mind. So I remember getting that seat purposely because I used to smoke. Yeah. Not anymore, thankfully. My kid took took that away from me in 15 seconds. Not bad. It took him 15 seconds. So I'll tell you the story now. By the way, this is not a toy-related show, but this is the type of show that I would love to do every now and then, like <laughs> just talking shit. But anyways, I, I remember getting that seat purposely because you could smoke in it, but it didn't matter who were next to you. Right. You just, just, just 
blowing yeah, fucking smoke. You're in a tube. And this lady comes in midway through and she's like, can I use your seat? And I go, what do you mean? And she goes like, yeah, can I, I need to, I need to smoke. And I go, well, for how long? Like, I was confused. I go, what's going on? And then she gave me a hundred bucks. It's like, just, just let me smoke for like. That know, lady really needed a cigarette, bro. Three back to back bucks. cigarettes. And I was staring, I was standing right next to the bathroom door, just looking at her with a hundred bucks in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. When I graduated from, uh, from college, a group of friends and I went to Jamaica for like a week, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, that was like 90, 1990, mm -hmm. 1991, 92. Correct. And uh, we, uh, my, my boy Marshall and I, he's a professional poker player now, uh, we were in advertising, advertising school, we had just graduated, mm -hmm. and uh, before we set off onto our professional careers, we went and did two weeks of debauchery in, in Jamaica with a bunch of other guys that we knew. Debauchery. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, he's like, uh, my name is, my last name is Benavides, you know, Jerry Benavides, but... Uh, yeah, I asked to put a lower third, but you were like, nah. He, uh, but he, he would call me Jerry Bueno Vibes. Cause Jerry he, Bueno Vibes. Because my professors <laughs> would, would always say Benavides. Mm -hmm. They would read my name, they go, Benavides, Benavides, and he changed it to Bueno Vibes. And then it got shortened to Bueno. That oh was, that's what he called me. He's like, Bueno, follow me. So we went to the back of the plane, lit up our Marlboro 100s, and we smoked, and it was just the back of the plane was the smoking area. Correct. You know? Correct. And it, and every time I tell my son Estelle, and I'm like, you know, bro, we used to smoke in airplanes. He's like, get out. I'm like, I'm serious. Yeah, well, not just that. Yeah, I don't know if you remember, but this wasn't that long ago, actually. I don't want to sound like an old fart, but you could go to an airport and say, hey, give me a ticket for New York and get on a plane. You can't do that shit. Man. Oh, yeah, just show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just show up and take the next flight. Yep. You can't do that shit. And I remember my dad handing over his gun to the pilot. And the pilot used to lock it in a little box, and then they gave it back to him at the terminal when, when our destination. I remember him like, wow. here, here's my, of course, he was all floated or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You could walk to, well, now it's a federal felony. Like, you, you will get arrested. If a you federal up. felony? Is that what you're saying? It's a federal it's, felony? It's a federal crime. Yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> a felony is federal. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. Asshole. <laughs> It's, hey. a, it's a federal felony. It's a federal felony. There we go. Show me the same fucking asshole. So where are we? Where are we looking here? That, Before we get into the yeah. beautiful box. That is a box of uh, of collectible cards, not baseball cards, but uh, Batman cards from the movie, the Tim Burton. Where does it come from? Where does uh, this thing come from? My brother-in-law, rest in peace, was a huge collector, and he used to buy full collections from people. You know, like he wouldn't really go. He didn't have the patience to build the collection himself, but he wanted to have full collections. Mm -hmm. So he would seek out people that had a full collection of anything. And he would drive to their 800 miles away. He would drive. Yeah, I'd love to do that. And then he would go through it. And, and he would more often times than not, he would buy it. So that is, I believe, at least five or six complete sets. It should be maybe more. Because a set is, yeah. like I was telling you, of camera i said it's something like yeah like i don't know less than a quarter of yeah quarter is here this is michael keaton that's the michael keaton batman and all the bad guys and the tim burton you know the the three four movies how many movies did tim burton do three movies right three and jack nicholson is the joker yeah yeah so this was sitting in an attic? Is this was, was? sitting, no, this was sitting in his man cave. And when he passed away, uh, I was helping my sister. My sister, very intelligently, what she did was she opened up a booth in, a, in an antique mall where, where she lives in Texas. Antiques are huge in Texas, huge. Mm -hmm. I wish antiques were bigger in South Florida. They get, as you get up to like Orlando. There's a bunch. Look at this. Um, yeah. Jack Nicholson. Yeah. yeah, but antiques in Miami are more like old furniture. And... Who said Miami? You're in Broward, bro. Yeah, I know, but it, you have you have to go north. You got to go to like West Palm to get some good antiques, you know? Because the Miami antiques. I feel, don't you feel like Florida is the only state that the more you drive up north, the the more south you get? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know, South Florida is another world, bro. It's it's you know, it's it's otra onda completely, right. completely. The moment you cross Pembroke Pines, you're yeah, bro. Else. Exactly. You, you start passport. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you start hearing banjos, so or gunshots. Yeah, exactly. So uh, federal felony asshole. 
when I went, yeah, federal felony. So when I went, uh, when I went to my sister's house after after he passed away, and I was helping her clean out the the thing, and she was selecting. Oh, I'm gonna put this in the booth. Oh, I'm gonna give this to so and so. Oh, I'm gonna give this to that person or whatever, you know. And then I came across those, and I was a huge and am a huge fan of the Tim Burton, you know, Batman series. Mm -hmm. And although my favorite is Dark Knight, you know, with Nolan. Yeah, with Christian Bale and, of course, the, the Joker with that kid that passed away. Anything with... anything done by Christopher Nolan is just Yeah, yeah the guy's a stud, man. The guy's yeah. a stud. The guy's a stud. And Heath Ledger, of course. One of my top ten favorite movies of all time. Me too. Inter no. Interstellar. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, you want... Fun fact. Tell fun me. Fun fact. Because mm -hmm. I know that you witnessed that my, my, my exit strategy from the company that we both used to work for right. at a certain time. Um, Interstellar played a key role. <laughs> and I, I kid you not. I kid you not. So, you know, I have a son that I love him. That he's my main everything mm -hmm. in life. He's my everything, right? Yep. I don't have a clear memory of him. What the heck was that? <laughs> was, did one of my caps go off in the thing in the, in my box? I don't know what the heck was that. That's a That's a cap. Like the ones I have in there. Really? You pulled them out. No, but tell the story. Tell the story. You fired pyrotechnics into a set. I tell them not. It's, a, it's an Is old... Is that what it was? It's what it sounded like. Okay. So, anywho, um, I wish I could use my camera, but it's freezing for some stupid reason. Um, what was the story? Okay, so my kid, when he was three, mm -hmm. I remember my memories of him of three years of age yeah. was sleeping. Because right. I used to leave to the office sure. and he was asleep and I used to get back home and he was asleep again. 12 hour days of television, baby, of course. Yeah. So I always tell people like the only one that will remember, the only person that will remember that you did all those extra hours at your job is your kids. Yeah. Will be your kids. Yeah. They don't like right now, if you go <laughs> and ask, nobody remembers the, all the extra love that we, that no, we gave to no, absolutely. So, I was watching Interstellar, and that movie, like I said, like movie in, for a myriad of reasons. I'm not gonna go into talking into a black holes and that type of stuff, but that, that's one of the main reasons, or, or extra dimension, intra dimensional experiences and mm -hmm, stuff mm -hmm. like that. But there's a scene where he's saying goodbye to his daughter yeah. before taking the trip, yeah, yeah. and he's basically explaining like, "Hey, look, this is a trip that I'm not coming back from." And imagine having that conversation. This yeah. is something that I need to do. For for the species for mankind, yeah, as 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 a whole, yeah, yeah, and that means saying bye to you. And then he was she, she was devastated. She didn't even want to see him. She was like just crying. And then he goes, "Well, according to your mom, we we never die because we become once we become parents, we become memory makers. Mm. So you will always leave as a memory within your kids." Right. And then my, my, it fired back on me. It was like, like a slap in my face. Cause I'm like, what fucking memory am I making? Yeah. And I was the guy that I was never there. Yeah. 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 And that's right moment. That, in that moment right there, sitting on the movie theater, watching the stereo, I said, I need to leave this company as soon as possible. But was your kid a, a set kid? Like my kid? Like, did he go to set with you? Did he go to sets? Did he? Not at that time. Cause he was too young. Because my Esteban, since he's four, he's been going with me to sets. Loves the catering table. Everybody, right. you know. Yeah, I've been purposely avoiding that. Because yeah. I don't want, I don't want, to, I don't want him to, to, to. I guess I, I was, I was hoping for him to forge his own path. Okay. And not influence his path that much. So, so he, you know, because that happens when the, if you're the son of a doctor and then of course you have that thing like well you know my military mom, parents also my yeah. mom is a lawyer and she mm -hmm. wanted me to be a lawyer and maybe i should have listened to her because i would have been fucking frustrated because it's raining and the golf course is getting yep. wet yep. instead of the issues that yeah, we're yeah, yeah, of course. in our things of course so i i was trying not to be i was trying to influence him in a different ways and not necessarily career yeah. driven things. I don't know if I was trying to influence Esteban. It was just that, you know how it is, uh, uh, our show used to air live to tape on Sundays. So Saturday's rehearsal day. Correct. 
and stuff. So you yeah, work, those eight wonderful weeks. Yeah, and if you're lucky, you get Monday or Tuesday off, whatever, but you pretty much work weekends when you're doing a Sunday show. Correct. And so Saturday was rehearsal day. It's an easy day, you know, so mm-hmm. I would take Esteban with me, you know, so he can spend time with me and I could spend time with him and he would go right to the catering table. He was the prince of the set because everyone knew that yeah, he was my son, I remember. you know. Remember and, the little Star Wars figures? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he would go and, and he would take a toy or, or, or something and he would sit there in the audience and, and do his thing and people would treat him well. And he started asking to go after that and he loves it, you know. And now as a 15-year-old, he still does. He loves it, but he's not going to go that way. He wants to be. He's going to be a pilot, so he's already taken flight lessons. He's in the civil. Nice. He's in the civil air patrol. He's in junior ROTC. He wants Amazing. To, he wants to be a naval aviator, and I go, dude, you're going to be like Maverick. He's like, who? I'm like, uh, I, I keep forgetting how old I am. <laughs> I'm like, dude, that's bad parenting. Dude, no I know, no, is. but when the new when the new Top Gun came out, he yeah. he went and saw it. Wonderful movie. Amazing. Amazing. Movie. Amazing movie. And then he's like, I want to see the original. I'm like, yeah, you do. And we sat there and watched the yeah, original. You should have done it in that order. Yeah. Like, let's watch the original. Because then the newest Top Gun was incredible. Incredible. No. He loved it. And when he saw the original after seeing that one, he was, oh, look how young Iceman is. Look how, you, you know, Val right. Kilmer was healthy. Right, 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 right. He wasn't dying of throat cancer, you know, right. poor guy. So he was young and everybody was young and beautiful. And they're playing volleyball without shirts on and the whole thing and the fighting in the locker room with towels on. He's like, I'm a little uncomfortable. Right, <laughs> like, right, right, dude, right. It's the 80s, bro. It didn't age well. Yeah, there was no, you know, <laughs> there yeah. was no auto eroticism. We were real men. Yeah, exactly. We didn't care about We would know, argue in towels. Argue in towels in the, exactly. in the bathroom. Exactly. Naked. I was not gay. <laughs> At all. Gay. At all. <laughs> and right now you're going to like. I was a fan of Boy George, for God's sake. Your mustache. Everything. No, like, no, no. That, that scene is so easy to take out of context nowadays. That Yeah, yeah. You know. But let's, let's go back to this. Okay, so what happened here is that today I brought in my childhood box to you when I was 10 years old. This used to be my mother's sewing kit, and uh, she gave it up, and it became my quote-unquote treasure chest. And, and, you're, and you're interviewing the whole thing, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. I want to know what – and let, let, me, let me just sit back a little bit. So every single week someone walks – with a box of some sort mm-hmm. through that door to sell stuff. But when you see stuff like this, that you can tell that this is the way you had it when you were a kid. Yeah, <gasps> it's the original it's, box. You, you know that you're into a treasure hunt of some sort. It's a, it's a it's treasure a time, chest. It's a time capsule. It's a, it is, a time, it is a time capsule. <laughs> so I want to know what this means. The Wild I'm Blazer gonna send, Club. I'm going to send this episode <laughs> to Andrea, Andrea Lopez. <clears> the Wild Blazer Lopez. Club. My... Um, grandmother and grandfather and all my aunts and uncles were smokers. Okay. So there was always cigarettes lying around. And my cousin, Rene, uh, and I, Rene, um, would steal cigarettes <laughs> from our uncles, aunts, grandparents, whatever, and we would stash them in this box. And when everybody would go to sleep, and I was doing a sleeper, we were constantly at each other's house on weekends. He was either sleeping over at my house or I was at his house sleeping over. Yeah, Hispanics in Texas. Yeah. And, <laughs> and he lived next door to my grandmother, of course. Okay. Of course. Why would he live anywhere else, right? right? <laughs> so uh, uh, we would we would smoke cigarettes, and so we created the Wild Blazer Club, which uh, was an exclusive club of only two members. <laughs> Future, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Count two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> since nineteen since nineteen seventy nine, the Wild Blazer Club, and we were the only members, and uh, we would stash the cigarettes and the matches in here, oh along with other treasures. When you're ten years old, anything you find. Of course. A glass that you could look through or right. whatever. You would put yeah. it in a magnifying glass. We found a magnifying glass, and that was a treasure. Right. So when everybody would go to sleep, a big thrill was for us to stay up past midnight, and we, 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 we could hear people sleeping and snoring. We would go into the box, get the cigarettes, sneak out of the house. There was a tree house that he had. We climbed the tree house, and we'd smoke cigarettes <laughs> like little <laughs> fucking maniacs. And that was the Wild Blazer Club. And then when my aunt, my tia nena, his mother... Uh-huh. Said, you know, say I'm a wild blazer. Uh-oh. And oh, because we're super fast. We uh-huh. run fast. And we're like, you know, so she goes, okay. <laughs> you you know? think that's where the whole writing thing started? Like you having to come up with. I've always, thing? no, I've always been a writer, man, since I was a kid. Like, I've always written stories and made up stories, not to like lie to my parents, but I would like write make up stories for my cousins and I would, you know, like read to them and stuff, like stories that I would write and make up. And, uh, when I was in the seventh grade, a teacher 
gave us he she broke us up into f- groups of four mm. I, I'll, I'll never forget this she broke us up into groups of four and then she gave us each a scene from like death of a salesman or whatever and she goes you guys figure out who's the director figure out who the actors are and i want you guys to act out this scene i read the scene i was 12 or something and i didn't particularly like the scene or approve it so i wrote my own scene i wrote my own fucking thing and i didn't ask for permission i just did it i told my friends this is horrible this is like shakespeare shit that no one understands i'm gonna write a scene that makes sense and i wrote a scene about siblings at dinner just like insulting each other and joking and at the end there's like a little twist where the dad they keep waiting for dad to show up and dad and then they, at the end like dad's been dead for years and that's just how they cope with it type i was deep shit i was a deep 12 year old bro but no wonder you ended up doing Hispanic television. Like you fucking turn Shakespeare into siblings fighting yeah. the dinner table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> well, I also de Guadalupe right there. See, no, <laughs> well, I started in advertising. The first, uh, mm-hmm. the first seven years of my career, I was in advertising. I was writing commercials in Spanish for Coca Cola, Burger King, American Airlines. Mm-hmm. You know, all that stuff. You know, we had a bunch of big blue chip accounts in San Antonio, and I did that for like seven oh, years so that, that's where you're from san antonio i thought you were dallas no i'm from laredo laredo texas don't get it twisted kid i'm uh-huh. from laredo so a, how come you cowboys and all that shit in the because it's texas dude because i'm from a little border town called laredo mm-hmm. and i go for the cowboys the spurs and the astros that's it do I you want... remember our fights uh, about sports yeah backstage? yeah i don't know jack shit about sports no nothing but... i'm a, i'm a dude i have fucking three rooms filled with toys how on earth do you, you think have, I have the mental space yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to to pay attention to no football? dude that's your thing you're full on right so you're full on i remember the super bowls and stuff but you were like so excited i'm like <laughs> no and then it's horrible because I was such a tourist bro because being from texas and, and being in south florida everybody's a dolphin fan or you know whatever and people you're love a steelers fans right? cowboys <laughs> carajo bro why are you trying to get me upset Fucking Steelers, man! Really? So I don't know shit, but I learned enough to push a button. Yeah, dude. That. What the fuck? <laughs> fucking cowards! <laughs> so you're a Star Trek fan, Guillermo? Yeah, exactly. Is that what's going on? Exactly. Boom! Upper butt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, upper butt. So uh, <laughs> being from Texas, I was the only cowboy fan for miles, and so no the, wonder my friends and the crew, the, all those guys. Sunday, you're there working, and they're like, oh, Cowboys are down by 10, mm-hmm. and they know I'm recording it. They, back in the days of TiVo, they know I'm recording it. Right. They know I'm going to go home and watch it, and they're like, oh, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't watch it if They'll I was here. Right? They, they love to spoil the shit. <laughs> and I would tell, I was their boss, dude. I would tell them, listen, guys, fun and game. Fun is fun, bro, but listen, I don't want to go home and watch my game. Blah, blah, blah. And, they would, and I don't want to hear anybody saying anything about the game. You got it? Yes, sir, we won't say anything. I, I start pushing. getting texts now. I remember now i'm getting that shit. now i'm getting texts right. and they're like we didn't say anything <laughs> we're sending you tech i'm like so anyway yeah so uh being uh growing up in south texas went to school at the university of texas in austin longhorns in, in austin and then my first job was in san antonio in okay. advertising did that for seven years and then uh my partner poncho and i who you know my boy poncho uh the Alfon- infamous alfonso yeah Arambula. alfonso arambula <laughs> uh he and i wrote a sitcom in Spanish and pitched it to Univision. They bought it. They brought us over. The sitcom lasted five minutes, but they saw enough value in us as creatives, as writers. We were there for 20 years, man. We were there for 20 years developing and shows. The rest and, is history. Yeah, creating all kinds of stuff. But this became soon after we stopped with the smoking and or we got busted or some bullshit. I don't remember what happened. We got caught. Blazer, the Wild Blazer Club. Yeah, the Wild Blazer Club came to an end. I intended to my to draw the bat signal there and it failed miserably but i was a huge 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 spider-man let's pop this up because i think we i love spider-man man and let me tell you why i love spider-man i love spider-man for two reasons number one he's a kid he's a teenager yeah, he's the underdog let's yeah see if we can say look he's, at that he's a teenager so right out of the bat let me see, let me show this to the camera right out of the bat this thing is filled with comic books original from the 80s right from your childhood yeah which is wonderful yeah i believe don't quote me on this but i believe this is tombstone's first appearance yes that's how it looks like so you know i i I, like i was surfing through them and i saw when stacy falling the famous gwen stacy falling when she falling Mm -hmm. from the i think it was brooklyn the brooklyn bridge from the brooklyn bridge i believe so don't quote me on that the people were gonna 
destroy me in the comment section. It was the queens. It was on queens. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. So I love Spider-Man because he's a kid. You know, he was 17 years old. He was a 16-year-old underdog, whatever, nerd. And also, what I love about him is that he would get hurt. He would get hurt. Well, he did. He would get regenerate. He would get I know, but he would come home beat up with black eyes and right. busted ribs. Yeah, yeah. He would regenerate himself, but he would limp home after these epic battles. He felt the pain. Well you know? Stanley always said that he was he was the ultimate underdog, you know, as a yeah. little kid from yeah. New York that gets yeah. bullied or whatever here. That's the that's the Glenn Stacy. Wow. This is incredible. Too. What's the price on that? I have no idea. No, no, look at the price on the corner. How much? Oh, 20, 75 cents. 75 cents I paid for that. Yeah. That's crazy. And I also love Batman because he does not have special powers. He has money. He's a vigilante. And that is also cool. He also is very vulnerable. You don't think, you know, I'm a theory, I'm, I, you know that I, that I love Batman and Batman is very dear and, mm -hmm. and it's a special character in my life for many, many reasons. But I always... I'm, 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 I believe <coughs> that he's probably worse than the Joker, because if you think about it, he has enough money to fix all the problems in Gotham. Mm. He can he can fucking just start generating jobs or yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. and fix Gotham. He has the, the the money to do it. Yeah, but I believe he doesn't do it because he really enjoys yeah. dressing up as a bad, coming out at night lurk in the shadows and beat the crap out of people that killed his parents so no 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 but that not everybody did he, no like, i know he, but he they all represent yeah on that they, every yeah. single day he's dark man he is dark. he's the dark knight he's the for dark a reason knight, yeah. people think that they call him the dark knight because of he moves in the in the dark no, but no it's because of he's twisted he's, he's as crazy as yeah. the joker yes he is yes he is look at this yeah He's as crazy as the Joker. Yeah. But why are we talking about Batman with a, which all of this? Because this is the Batcave because of my signal here that I drew when I was 10. It's filled with Spider-Man stuff. Yeah, it's, I, I have no, I have no, I've never really ever bought a Batman comic. It's just, I was a big fan of the cheesy 60s. But what's up with this? Oh, that's my artwork, brother. It's colored by numbers. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah, I it's remember. It's colored by num numbers. Yeah, colored by numbers. And I, uh, uh, and that's my... I was quite the artist, I believe. This is amazing because I don't think I know I know this because this is the type of stuff that we used to do backstage, like talk about while well, we had, I don't know, some Mexican banda norteña on, on yeah. the set. We were talking about this type of thing. Exactly. Like, it was a way to diffuse or to balance out sure. what we're doing. But this is probably the first time that you, that you talk about this publicly, right? Yeah. No, it is because let me tell you something. I collect, I, I kept them just because, I didn't know, I don't know why I was keeping them. I mean, this is, I was a kid. I was just keeping them because they were mine. Well, this is a time capsule. Yeah, I was keeping them because they were mine. And then once I went to college, my parents broke broke down my room and put everything up in the attic. Like everyone You know, else. and then when my, when my, when my mom passed away and my dad wanted to sell the house and move out, I went in there to clean up the house and I found it. I'm like, oh, wow, this is still here. And it was then that I decided, okay, I'm going to eventually have a kid and I want him to read these comic books because these are the books that I grew up with and blah, blah, blah. But so, I like that. Tell me about that experience of, of, you know, reconnecting with this, like, you know, once again, the time capsule yeah. analogy, like you just went back to, because on, on the toy side, the way that I see it, especially when we were doing the Darko series, I noticed that a lot of the people the toy room becomes like some sort of temple yeah and, and this is a great way to get this show back into that concept of toy related subjects so people use you know when they walk into that temple or that religious peaceful state they reconnect absolutely. to that old seven year old eight year old absolutely version of themselves that didn't even know what mortgage means absolutely problems were like in my personal case i know the lights were on for some miraculous reasons the fridge always had food mm -hmm. like i never have like i had wonderful parents and i never have those issues of like you know that that some other people have in the sense of so when i reconnect 
with that that phase of my life, everything is beautiful. Yeah. No, I had a chappy. I had a chappy. I had a happy childhood as well. My parents were both teachers, educators, and uh, suburba, su suburbia, middle class kid. You know, right. grew up. You know, had a TV in my room. You know, didn't have to worry about anything. My college was paid for by my parents. You know, it was like right. it was good. You know, so my memories of my childhood are very happy, and and this is a major part of it. Uh, that's, this, what, that's why I want to tap on it. How do you feel when you open it up that bridge to that old version of you that were, you know, it makes me happy and it makes 24 me 24 happy. It makes me happy and sad at the same time because those were simpler times, of course, and the whole thing. Um, I loved it when my son was eight years old mm -hmm. and we cracked up, we cracked open the, the, the wall blazer club box. And oh he, really? He did this with a stem, and he went through it, and he read every single one. Really? Yeah, yeah. He read every single one. Uh, kept a couple that he liked. Hopefully, not very expensive ones. I mean, if you, I don't think I had a Doesn't first. Matter. I don't think I had a first edition in there. But he. Uh, You're not that old. The ones that uh, that really. You're not that old. Well, yeah, I, I feel that old, and uh, to have that first edition. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, he. He kept the ones that he liked, but mostly he read through them. And they, it, this lived in his room for a while. And he would every night read a, a different a different comic, you know. And he loved the feel of it because it's old and it smells like the '80s. It smells yeah, old. It smells like I love that smell. You know, it yeah. takes me back. Yeah, it smells like yeah. good old paper. You know. And I connected to him even more through Star Wars. That is the main thing that we bonded with because Star Wars means the world to me. And he. See, I mean, she's not. I'm sorry to interrupt. But no, she's no. not. She's not like a major Mockingbird. She's not a major, no. but an introducing Marvel's newest sensation. So this might be Mockingbird's first appearance. Once yep. again, comic books is not my. And and I can assure you, someone is watching this, and he is going, like, oh, "You should not handle it like that." Look at <laughs> Nick Fury before when he was white, before Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> yep. Yep. So I'm sorry, you were saying that it's Devin and Star Wars. Yeah, and Star Wars, because again, I was 10 years old when the first one came out, and it just blew my mind. And then I was there, I was there throughout the... You were 10 years old in 1977? What? In 1977, I was 7 years old. Okay. 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 Yeah. So... Like, wait, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, it blew my mind, and it was, it caught me at the perfect age, you know? Yeah, at, of course. At the you were the, you were perfect. The, you were the target. Yeah. If you were seven, between seven and ten, you were the target. Dude, and I had films. the X-wing fighter. I had the Tie fighters. I had the uh, the three story with the compactor thing that you know, like that star, the Death Star thing. Uh -huh. You know, the three uh -huh. stories, and Luke would fall into the into the trash compactor. Yeah, yeah. Red, yeah. red. Um, it was like foam, a red little, thing with foam. That yeah. foam disintegrates. Yeah. Nowadays, yeah. like it's nearly impossible to find that foam good shape because uh that in the dagobah the jota's house yeah i never got that that one also disintegrates because the phone they i mean when they made those toys and no one thought that these were you know gonna be yeah and i was a kid for 45 years i always feel years. like i was a kid at the perfect time because six million dollar man was huge at the time oh, i was yeah. such a fan of Sequoia. you have the 12 inch that you can look like look yeah. through the eye yeah. and the little arm opens up and uh -huh. you can see the uh -huh. thing and you could operate on him the thing you know steve austin right. astronaut barely alive right, right, right. greatest opening you know and yeah. what a superhero you know with him Sound running effect, the, like, the, 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 the slow motion and then when they brought in the, the bionic woman, uh -huh. you know, she was so pretty. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And she was also awesome. And they were a great couple. And my favorite episodes when he fought Sasquatch, you know, when he fought the, you know, the, the Bigfoot, you know, right. and, and Bigfoot throws the big log at him and he blocks it with his arm. And it, I, every Friday night, I was just like six million dollar man, bro. That's, so so uh, it's going back to Steven, is Steven connected like with Star Wars? Yeah. Is, is that connection still alive? Yeah, no, it is. Oh, it even is. with the newer stuff. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's because really... I lost my kid with the newer stuff. He's like he's not engaged with the newer stuff, and I don't blame him. I don't like the newer stuff, as you know. He watches. I mean, he he he's the one that got me into the Mandalorian. You know, well, Mando, Mando, yeah, but mm -hmm. I mean, like you know, the newer like the Acolyte and, and right. He he watches it. JJ's shit. He watches it, but he doesn't like he he hated. Uh, 
he was really excited about the book of Boba Fett. And he was like, mm. you know, he was like, eh. I'm yeah, like, really? You know, my kid told me, he, he, might ask, he always has the right thing to say at the worst time. Um, with Boba Fett, I remember when, it, you know, like all of us Star Wars crackheads, mm -hmm. we play, we try to do marathons and we try to come up with excuses to watch all the films together. And it gets to a point where the kids are like, well, you on or I'm like, well, we're doing this. And then I used to, I used to, not anymore because of that, I used to get like uberly excited with Boba Fett yeah. because that was my favorite character. Yeah. It was my favorite toy, by all means. My favorite action figure from mine Star too. Wars was, was no, mine too. Boba Fett. Yeah. And, you know, here's yeah. the helmet. No, I've been looking so, at the helmet, yeah. So, well, the camera is freezing, but yeah, the helmet is somewhere back there, whatever. Anyways, um, so he gets to a point that he goes, Dad, can I ask you a question? Don't get offended. And I go, when he says, can I ask you a question? I know there's trouble. And and I I actually build that, like, questioning part. Like, it's my fault. So now yeah. I'm just, so I go, yeah, what's up? And he goes, why do you like this guy so much? And I go, what do you mean, Boba Fett? What do you mean? Why do I like him so much? What do you mean? Like, I, He's a bounty he, hunter, he, man. He's like, I told you not to get offended. And I go, yeah, but what do you mean? He goes, hear me out. He has a point. He goes, he barely shows up. Right. He has two lines. Right. And when you're about to see him in action, he gets thrown into the sod like pit. Yeah. And I go, thank you for killing Boba Fett to me. Yeah. Get the fuck out of my room. But, may <laughs> but maybe that's why. Maybe because less is more. Maybe just because he was he had such a cool outfit. I got to the conclusion that in my personal case, it was the action figure. The action figure was so cool. That, and of course, the Bondi Hunter and all that backdrop. And he shot that, that thing out of, his, or out of his back. He shot that thing. Well, no one had that. Right. The, the Fire and Rocket Boba Fett. Uh, that never came out. But uh, but yeah, the Bounty Hunter and that, that, that freaking helmet. That helmet is fucking it's amazing. It's awesome, dude. It's awesome. And, and he's design. a hired gun. He works, for the, he works for the Dark Side or for the Force, whoever hires him. You know? But all those stories are in our heads. Yeah. Like, if you take the movie literally. No. It's just a background character. Yeah, nothing. Nothing. N nothing. So nothing. it's interesting. Is that your thing? I don't know. It might be. Pull it out. <laughs> You're going to kill me here. Yeah, I think so. It's those caps. Is that what it is? I don't know. That's, 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 what, that... makes, that's what makes that sound. Well, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to tamper with it. You and your surprises. Yeah. It's probably on purpose. Yeah. Um. But Esteban is, is really cool because I'm, I'm a big collector and I go to a lot of uh, swap meets and antique shows mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And Esteban goes with me just because he's, he's with me. I'm like, dude, I'm going right. to drive up to, you know, South, you know, West Palm. I want to check out this new store that might have some collectible stuff, you know, that I want to look at, you know, old T-shirts, old signs, whatever. He'll come with me. And he did something that really, really touched me that he started collecting toys that I grew up with in the 80s. Like oh, wow. original, like he found the original, uh, just, just because dad had it. Exactly. That's amazing. Dad, did you have this? I'm like, yeah. And he bought the original evil Knievel. Oh, really? That goes two yeah, feet and then one. falls, right, right, you right. know, never worked, you know? And Horrible toy. yeah, <laughs> he bought uh, an original eight magic eight ball. He bought an original etch a sketch from the eighties, you know, like they, they make them still, you know, but he bought the real one from the eighties and his room has a little collection of, daddy toys that i grew up with the gi joes he's got seven gi joes but the big ones you the know 12 inch. yeah not the little the action inch. figures now the big ones you know that, I, i'm younger than you mm -hmm. so i'm i'm from the three three quarter yeah no i'm from the big yeah. this is this is um here uh here this is a snake eyes tattoo oh is it yeah this is the um the emblem of the Arashikage clan from Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow. Oh, okay. It's supposed to be red, but I was like on the fence. I was like, I don't know how I feel about having something red staring at me the whole time. And every everything else that I have is black. So I'm like, I'm just going to turn it into black and then scratch it. Because yeah. I'm not a ninja. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's why. Because that's, I'm not a ninja. Right. But this is the, I kid you not. But look. Snake Eyes is right there. Yeah. Um, that's my favorite character from G.I. Joe. That's, see, I was into the action figures, but never really got into the storylines and never got into the thing. I just loved 
the little toolbox that you would get the military little oh the, yeah the little what's it called yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the, uh, the green box carrying case yeah and it had all his tools and the shovels and the different outfits and the whole thing but that's you know but you're talking 12 inch yeah you're talking the the big one yeah doll yeah the big the action figure the big one and so those were dolls esteban those were dolls jerry they were supposed to they were supposed to, so here's the criteria behind those those mm. were dolls they were supposed to <laughs> look at look at him getting pissed off <laughs> those were supposed to be so if you had a, a daughter mm -hmm. and a son they were supposed to play together with those things because she had a barbie and you had a gi joe that was the mentality that makes sense but scale wise i loved it and esteban has i have i have a boss aldrin here at the store you do a 12 inch boss aldrin see that's Still. that's awesome dude yeah. that's awesome because yeah. esteban has like seven of the big gi joes in his room in different positions whatever and whenever his friends his buddies come over they go what the hell is that those dolls? Like, that was my dad's old toys you know whatever and they just he doesn't call them dolls no he calls them no he calls <laughs> them figures. he calls them gi joes bro. <laughs> what they are they're gi joes they're joes not... G.I. Joe. The right? real American hero. Yeah. So Esteban and I, since he was little, you know, when he was, when he came into the world and he was like four, five, six years old is when, is when uh, uh, The Force Awakens mm. started coming out. Mm -hmm. And then I told him, I want you to see The Force Awakens with me, but first we have to have a little film festival. Right. And so I showed him, not in order. But I showed to him. Give him context. I showed him a new hope. And Not I, in order. So no, you did it in order of release. I showed it to him in order of the way I saw them. So a in new order hope. Of four, five, six, so one, two, four, three. Four, five, six, and then, and then one, one, two, two three. three. Because at, at that time, I did it, it backwards. You did it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And guess what? Well, you finished your story, so I can tell you mine. Um, I told him because again, he's all about my experience. So I go, let me tell you when I was your age, the movie that I saw nice. that freaked me out was a new hope and let's watch it. And we watched it and he was like, wow, he was like, it's so fucking cool. The whole lightsaber thing, the whole look, 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 in my opinion, the reason four, five and six, in my opinion, are better than one, two and three. Here we go. Here is, we go. Is because, <laughs> is because the thing that drew me to Star Wars when I was a kid was that everything that I had seen about outer space up to that time, Lost in Space or whatever movie, 2001, space, whatever movie, everything was so clean and pristine. Everything was perfectly shiny. Everything was white. Everything was thing. And now we come to A New Hope and everything is banged up. The, the Millennium Falcon's a piece of crap. Yeah, they basically raped science fiction it's with star wars dirty. And, it worked, and it worked yeah and they, it's they have dirty explosions like in in space which doesn't i know with it, i know, know. The, the, that's why star trek i know there's this clash between them there's not supposed to be sound yeah there's not supposed to be fire because there's you're in a vacuum yeah and, exactly and, but guess what it looks fucking cool it looks amazing <laughs> and then everything is banged up like what's that the land cruiser that that luke rides when he's in in, in his home planet the one that floats, the little car, what's it called? Uh, is that a Land Cruiser? Is that a, uh, what's that vehicle called that, that Luke rides in, in A New Hope? It's like a car, but it floats. It's like a long sedan. The Land Speeder. The Land Speeder. Mm -hmm. It's got dents on it. The fucking, yeah, the, yeah. the rocket part is all burned out at the yeah. back where the fire comes were poor. Yeah, exactly. They had no money. They exactly. were farmers. And, exactly, and exactly. So that was the first thing that got me. It's like, God, this is great, man. Like, this yeah. is like real, you yeah. know? And then... The extra stuff that 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 uh, that Lucas did, like the lightsaber, and then to this day it gets me the sound of the Tie Fighter, the roaring of yeah. that thing yeah, is was, amazing. And every trachea will go like, there's no sound in space. It's amazing yeah. because every time you hear it, every time it goes, roar, you know, the roaring, and then of course Darth Vader is one of the coolest. Yeah, like, could have been bird for that time design. Yeah, like, that guy was. The, yeah. The, is, uh, uh, a, yeah, a whack and like, then of course there is a documentary that that talks about that. Like he went, he would. Just oh yeah. Say, oh yeah. He went. He goes with with mics. So he used to like back then to go with a mic, and then and then there's a there's a street light that was um, held with wires in order to prevent the thing to fall into mm -hmm. the highway, and then there's this wire attached to an anchor mm -hmm. on a cement piece, and then attached to a street light. So there's all these metals combined in there with tension. So he goes with a little, he puts a mic on the thing with a little rock. He goes like, pew, pew. 
So the Adat's um, um, blaster sound comes from something like that. It was wow. just him knocking on things, wow. like creating folly. That's amazing. So I, I don't remember the, the the origin of the whole roar. What's the name of the, the documentary? I want to see it. There's a few. There's a few, but there's one from the 80s. It's uh, Return of the Jedi. I'll send you the link. It's, it's special effects of Return of the Jedi. Is that, that's the first time I saw that type of stuff. It's amazing. And that's what, you know that, that I do what I do for a living because of Star Wars. Yeah. So it, it was heavily influenced. Like, oh, shit, I want to do that type of stuff when I grow up. I no, it's it. crazy. No, it's amazing. And it really affected me. So I have a theory about Star Wars that I don't think you agree with, but I think we've talked about this in our private lives. I don't remember exactly where, where we fell on this, but I do not believe, and no one will ever convince me, that George Lucas had all nine episodes in his head mapped out, or at least the first six mapped out. I'm surprised and to he, hear that. And, never told me that and he decided to start with four just because it That's... was the most exciting one. I think he called it episode four just because it was fucking cool, man. Because it, no. when I was a kid and I'm I saw, surprised you're telling me this. and I saw episode you're, you're, four, you you do things like that. Yeah, you come out, you come out. No, 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 you don't. I seen you doing things like that. You come out with a storyline, and then we decided to grab this piece, and then we either don't touch the origin part of it, or we just move forward. But you you are wired to think in arches. I believe that he made Star Wars: A New Hope as a standalone movie. He had no idea. No one had any ideas to become a global sensation. No one. No one knows that shit. No one. And anybody who tells you, oh, I knew well, it. the 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 formal explanation is because of all the politics in the prequels, like all the Galactic Empire and all that stuff. In his mind, from a production standpoint, mm -hmm. he was like, "I'm not gonna be able to afford that shit." Okay, because that that requires big stuff. Whereas a new hope, which he didn't know he was going to make the rest at that point. Right. It, 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 that, as a matter of fact, the opening night he was hiding somewhere because he thought it was going to flop. Yeah. Right. But a new hope, it, in a, in a nutshell, it's a farm boy mm -hmm. that follows a wizard mm -hmm. into a hero's journey, mm -hmm. Joseph Campbell, mm -hmm. and then he meets a pirate mm -hmm. that has another pirate as a co-pilot. The anti-hero. They yeah. jump on a boat. And go and rescue a princess. Yep. It's that's the simple art. Exactly. So from a production standpoint, that's a story that I can tell when I don't have money. Whereas in the other one, I need to show the galactic empire and the vastness of the reach of this military force that blah, 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 blah. That from a, as, a, as a line producer type of mentality, you go, well, you're going to need more money to do that part. As a, if you focus on the farm boy, yeah. that's maybe easier to tell. As a writer and as a storyteller, I would say that he, everything you just said is valid about A New Hope. And then when it became a huge hit and he's like, all right, I'm going to come back and do, you know, uh, because the only thing that kind the only thing that kind of hints at more movies is that Darth Vader doesn't die. He spins out. Mm hmm. If if he really thought this is gonna be it, you kill Darth Vader there. He's the bad guy. It's a one time, it's a one shot movie, but he doesn't. He spins out. So that's maybe what causes a little bit of doubt in my mind. But then you get to Empire Strikes Back, one of my favorites. Okay, um, everyone's favorite. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna play a game with you right now. But Empire Strikes Back comes back, and then I think Lucas goes, all right. What do I do now? Like, what do I do? How do I evolve these characters? Because Darth Vader killed his father. No, no. Darth Vader is his father. And I'll leave that till the last act. And then at the end of Empire Strikes Back, there's a definitely going to be a next one because Luke is fucked up. Fucking Han Solo's frozen. Well, but that was a business decision. I mean, yeah. due to the success of the yeah, first yeah, one, yeah, they yeah. were like, you better not finish the story. No, leave it with a cliffhanger so we can make it more. Of course. Right? And, and that's why, you know, Han is frozen in Carbonite. Mm -hmm. the, the princess in this, the same They're on the archetype. run. They're yeah. on the run. Um, Bather is, you know, he, he, breathing on their necks. And, and that type of stuff, the, you, it ends on a cliffhanger. Yeah. That's why everybody likes it. However, he had a different version of Empire Strikes Back. And it was Marsha Lucas, George's former wife, mm -hmm. that actually grabbed and twisted the whole thing. It was in the editor room that that the empire became what we what we ended up getting well she did a great job bro because that movie when that thing ended i was like what the hell? i was freaking out you know but and it's dark 
but it ends, it ends fucked up. Like you know, wait, what? Darth Vader, that is his father, and then Luke lost a hand, and and they grab Han Solo. Like it yeah. ends up like, really? Are you really gonna yeah. finish this film like yeah. this? And then he figures out that in 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 uh, Return of the Jedi, he's not gonna make them twins. He's gonna make them siblings, which explains why they kissed in Episode Two because. Lucas had no freaking idea what he was going to do in the future. That was not planned. That is correct. Well, he admitted that. That's, he kissed. That's no they, secret. Yeah, he kissed, and they kissed him, and, and whatever. And to not, and now, my son, when he saw that, he's like, "Aren't they?" I'm like, "Dude, <laughs> <laughs> don't, get, don't get into that." It was yeah. It, yeah. Well, yeah, Lucas had a weird. I, I don't know if you've seen. The, there's a dark side on the man. I worship the, the man, mm -hmm. as you know. There's a dark side, on, yeah. and and he. People have asked about that, and of course, he he has a very interesting way of addressing that. The most logical reasons that at that point they didn't know they were going to be related, right? And that was a twist, and that and that adaptation, let's call it like that, for Return of the Jedi. But at the same time, there's this famous story when Indiana Jones and you know that Marion and Indy meet, and then they're like, "You left me," and blah blah blah. I was only sixteen when you left me. Mm. And and he's like twenty five years older than her at that time. Yeah, yeah. So you go like, wait, what? Yeah. She was how old when they were together? Yeah. What the fuck is this? Yeah. And so someone asked him. There's like a recording, something like that, of him talking about that, and he's like, well, you know, grandparents. Well, my our grandparents were. Yeah. That was normal. It's a different People time. Were getting married at fifteen and having kids. Dude, at the music and... from the eighties, you know. She was too young to fall in love, right. and I was too young to know. Like right. she was only sixteen. It's like what? Right. So, <laughs> you know? so having these two kids in each other is not. No, it's just the time. It's just the time, and, and even if you look back at the old, uh, the old uh, cartoons with the uh, with Bugs Bunny and stuff, they got some horrible racist stuff. Well, like what you were saying about the advertising. Yeah. And all that, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's just the time. So anyway, a lot of people say that Empire Strikes Back is the best movie. I have my personal. I don't know which one is yours, but Empire. but you just ruined it. But I want to do I want to do this thing. Uh huh. So. Oh my God! I randomly you have a paper and yeah, everything. I randomly, I randomly, <laughs> I randomly put the names of all the movies, and in order to get it to sixteen, you've got to be kidding me! I created a, I created a, I created a. Oh my God, Jerry! <laughs> a bracket like we do for the for the NCAA uh, <laughs> basketball thing, uh -huh. where movies are going to go against each other. I'm going to talk. I'm going to ask you who wins between this movie and that, uh -huh. and then that movie advances. You and need a pen or you? My God, I look brought at a pen. Him. I brought a pen. Reproduce and everything. This All is right. a surprise, by the way. All right. So we're going to do the bracket game with the Star Wars. Now, in order to get to 16, I've included the series, like The Mandalorian and stuff like that. I know it's not fair because the series have more to deal with, but it's my game. Fuck you. We're going to do it that way. All right? You ready? Yeah. I guess so. Let's do All it. All right. So the first matchup this that we have. genuinely that I didn't know about this. Now, I did not set these matchups like... This is random. I put them on. I put like little pieces of paper in a hat, and I, then I, I find that hard to believe. And I but pulled I it out. Go by that. So the first matchup is Empire Strikes Back versus The Last Jedi. Oh come on, Empire Strikes Back, dude! Kill the Last Jedi already. That the the that, that name shouldn't even be on dude, the page. The the walk. The first time I saw the la the Empire Strikes Back and the oh, the, the Adats, the, the all terrain the attack, Todd, whatever they call all terrain attack transport. Eso, uh -huh. dude. I'm like, what? When they come through on the on the visors, you know, and it's just like, what the fuck with and that? Not only that, the expectation, like, dun, 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 yeah, the music yeah, and yeah. everything, and you have this big things coming towards you, and it was, that was my favorite vehicle. Yeah, as, as a toy when I was a kid, like when I when I transitioned into Joe's, the Ada came along. Like, yeah, I didn't leave that behind. Like, it was Cobra, so Cobra cool, earned dude. that. Those, those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. And when that ship goes down and the thing, the added steps on right. it, and the pilot gets. I mean, it's just what a what. How do you fight that machine? You right. know, and it's Luke that says, "Your cables, use your cables." You know, and the way they fall. I mean, amazing. You know the story about the the CIA officer, and, and that no. was um, there was this, this CIA officer that was. Um, interrogating and then doing a profile of, on the Guantanamo um, Afghans, Taliban's uh, mm -hmm. prisoners and and she noticed that there was a pattern that their favorite movie was the Star Wars and when she asked why 
they said that well basically Star Wars is the best reference of what they stand for yeah and then she goes like what you know because that's not we don't see it as a terrorist movie and they go like no that's a group fighting against a, an evil almighty old it's very religious dude. it's very religious no, but at the same time it's it's a little group of people fighting against this mighty army all powerful all you know and they win at the end by doing a terror if you think about it not everybody on the death star was guilty no i know that was a genocide no, that was a, a terrorist was. attack no dude it's very <laughs> it's very biblical because dude it is very spiritual I mean, yes i mean uh uh fear fear leads to anger anger leads to hate hate leads to the dark it's side suffering may the force be with you is basically que, que Dios te bendiga. may the force yeah. be with you is god bless you yeah, yeah, yeah. it's what it is i feel well, the I, force the force is is this um, uh, it's the best description of god yeah from a scientific an invisible and invisible yeah. energy that That's protects us all us that protects us, us and it gives, the and it gives some of us special powers you know of course. the healers if that are the wielder yeah exactly <laughs> yeah no no it's it's it's, it's, it's that, that, that that river runs deep all right next matchup Revenge of the Sith versus The Force Awakens. Revenge of the Sith. You're not going to give me any of the newer crap. Dude, I love that. That's I love because it's a great origin story for, for, for Darth, for Darth Vader. I mean, when... Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. yeah. When well, fucking, I was going to tell you. When Anakin is burning right. in hell, by the way. When right. Anakin's burning. Yeah. On, ah, Obi-Wan <laughs> just cut his arms and legs off. Yeah. And his eyes are red. He's like, I hate you. Well, everyone is a horrible character, dude. He's very manipulative. With it, like he, if you think about it, that old guy is the, is the one to blame for everything. Yeah, like he's like Anakin, and you're going to a council. You're not gonna be a Jedi, but what we really need you to do is to spy on your friend Palpatine. Yeah, and I go, why are you putting him in this position? Yeah. And then, Anakin, you we cannot we cannot, you know, indulge into sexual activities and whatever but i'm going to send you with padme on a little retreat with the hottest queen ever uh, and and she walks in with wearing this thing like a poor the, kid the poor, white the white outfit poor yeah. kid and says i know the black one the one she was like you've grown so much oh, annie <laughs> i haven't seen you since you were a little yeah. boy annie yeah, and he's the like elevator she goes like hi yeah like, yeah. Hola. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah yeah poor kid no i know but then even with luke he was like this lightsaber belonged to your father. Your father wanted me to, for you to have this lightsaber. And it's bullshit. All that is lies. Yeah. You took him when he was dying in that lava thing. Yeah. Like, and yeah. you know, even when Luke in Dagobah, when he tells Jonah, like, you know, I'm out. I'm gonna go and save my friends, and they're like, don't. Yeah. This is Vader is doing this on purpose. This is and more he important. leaves and goes, like, that boy was a last hope. Jonah goes and says, nope, there's, there's another. another. These motherfuckers are very, they're, yeah. they're as twisted as the other guys. Yeah, but again, why would Kenobi say that was our last one? Kenobi knows there's a sister. He's the one that sent him away with Jimmy Smith and, and with uh, Uncle Ben, right. you know? Jimmy Smith took, yeah. yeah. took, yeah. uh, yeah. took Padme and, you know, raised her while he was what, a I'm, lawyer in Los Angeles right. in L.A. Law. Right. <laughs> Whatever the fuck he did. Anyway. Malibu, because they were rich. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so... A New Hope versus Phantom Menace. A New Hope. Agreed. Okay. I like Phantom Menace. I like Phantom Menace too because, again, origin story of Anakin. When he's a little kid, the well, pod, the pod I'm racing. I'm trying to tell you. I, show, I did the opposite with my kid. I show him one, two, three, four, five, six. And guess what? Lucas is a brilliant motherfucker. Because when we transition into A New Hope, and by the way, I, I knock in a Rogue One in between. That's the way you should do it. Yeah. Right? So... I think it was an empire. It was an empire. When he gets like where they're in, in Bespin and like, you know, Vader is chopping Luke's hand and they, he's like cornering everyone. And mm-hmm. then Han Solo gets frozen in carbonite and all that. My kid, he was probably six or seven. He was like, Anakin, why are you doing this? Because he knows him. And I just oh, turned around shit. and looked at I him and go like, of that. this is brilliant. I never and thought of that. My reaction was like, you're rooting for the bad guy. He's like, he's not the bad guy. When he's you Anakin. Watch, when you watch it in that order, of course, because you know him. And brilliant. Yeah. I thought it was brilliant. He because was rooting for like, Anakin, why are you doing? Like, because, they made, your... because they made that little boy brilliant. He was building robots as a little kid. He was flying the potter, the right. pod, the, what do you call them, the, the pod racers, whatever. I mean, he was a brilliant and kid. And we watched Clone Wars when it came out mm-hmm. on air. And he was and then Rebel. So he has that, that 
Yeah. That additional Esteban flavor. Esteban watched Rebels. Esteban watched Rebels. Too. Additional flavor of Anakin. Yeah. yeah. The, I never thought of that. Yeah. I never yeah. thought yeah. of he that. He was the one that opened my eyes about yeah. that. Yeah. Literally, we were watching the movie and I just turned around like, cannot believe you're rooting for the bad guy. Because when I grew up, he was the ultimate bad guy. Yeah. There was no good side of him. Because that, that redemption scene at the end doesn't count. Right. Uh, let, you know, let me see you with my, my own eyes. Nice. Nice. <laughs> After you fucked the galaxy for fucking 30 years, get the fuck <laughs> out of here. Anyway, so yeah, because Esteban saw four, five, six, one, two, three. So when he saw Phantom Menace, he's like, that's Darth Vader. Mm -hmm. So he was thrilled because of that. But I see what your son did. He's like, what are you doing, Anakin? Yeah. Oh, go, bro. He was, he was in conflict. That's crazy. Because Anakin, Anakin was going into the dark side. Never thought he, of As that. a matter of fact, he doesn't like that scene. When he did the whole eye things, yeah. he doesn't like that. He was like, "What? Why? Is, why are they turning my favorite character into yeah. this wicked guy?" Yeah, yeah. Next matchup: Ashoka versus Obi Wan Kenobi. No, Ashoka. I didn't like Obi Wan Kenobi. It was non-canon. Those two meet at the Death Star, and they go, "We meet again at last." You know, yeah. we meet again at last. It's a it's a pawn to that lava sequence. Yeah. And then, but now I am the master. Blah 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 blah. So technically, there's a there's a whole new end and connotation in that conversations that that shows that after the last time that we, they saw each other was when they fought. Yeah. So all of these flirting around and mm -hmm. the little things and they're not canon. Right. And then when Vader is walking in the Death Star, he's like, you know, push the brakes and he goes like, Obi Wan, like I can feel him, like Obi Wan is here. Yeah. So all of that doesn't make sense. Yeah. No, you're right. I understand from a business point of view of... Yeah. And it was lovely to see Hayden Christensen again on the suit and all that. The, the, all of that was great. But those two shouldn't yeah. have cross paths. Yeah, yeah. And I don't even want to talk about Jar Jar Binks. Like, I don't even want to talk about it. Okay. At least I like Jar Jar Binks. Excuse me. Excuse me. Kill that fucking yeah, guy. Look. Next, next matchup. Rise of Scar the Rise of Skywalker versus, the, versus the Mandalorian. Mandalorian. Yeah. Okay. None of that JJ stuff. I hate dude, that Mandalorian shit. is so great, dude, because first of all, it deals with basically a Boba Fett type of thing, you know, which uh -huh. is great. Uh, Baby Yoda was genius. Yeah. You know, I mean, marketing genius, yeah. you know, the whole thing. But that final episode, dude, when Luke, our Luke young. Him, our Luke, the Luke that we're waiting to see forever and yeah. we didn't get with those movies that you just mentioned. Young Luke yeah. just comes in and just tears apart that whole thing and take i got him and he takes you i mean that i was like oh not just that like like look, i was saying that in spanish in the other episode uh that's the look that i was waiting to see for 35 years yeah that because you will you never get to see look becoming a jedi knight in mm -hmm. the old film right he gets his poor quick training on the falcon and then obi-wan's out and then you better go and watch yoda and then yoda's out like he doesn't get properly trained yeah. ever no and then when you finally get to see him blooming as a jedi knight the movie ends yeah so that's the jedi that that, that they were owed yeah and what they gave us is this old fucking guy drinking milk and throwing lightsabers away and I go, who the yeah. hell yeah. is this character how did he get to that point and why is he so and we understand that he got betrayed by kylo and the whole thing i get it but, dude, I mean, you want to see Luke be well, Luke. That episode in, in The prime. Mandalorian, when, when Luke comes out, mm -hmm. it's called a rescue. And, and people in the know say that they're rescuing the character. Yeah. No, they should. Because <laughs> it was brilliant. It made me stand up and go, oh! You know, it was, I it was, cried. It was great. I cried when Luke came back. And, it was great. In The Mandalorian. It was great. Next matchup. Solo versus Return of the Jedi. Oh, shit. That's a hard one. I really like Solo. I like it, too. I really like Solo. But... I was, uh, I was at the sweet age when Return of the Jedi came out. Yeah. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen Return of the Jedi, and I really, really like that movie. What I love about Jedi is, again, those bikes that in the in the, the speeder bikes, the yeah. speeder bikes, those in scenes the, that we know yeah. when they crash into the trees and yeah. stuff. It's amazing, yeah. and uh, the Ewoks. I never had an issue with the Ewoks because I, I don't have an again, issue. It's just once again, I was I was at that sweet age that Ewoks didn't yeah. matter. Um, if you think about it, the Ewoks are fucking creepy as hell. Yeah, they were gonna eat them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were gonna eat them, and then the Leia comes up with with some wardrobe. 
that she got and then and then you think like where that came from yeah someone that they didn't probably no prior but, to meeting. but jedi has jedi has those 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 bikes that i love and it's got the great scene with leia in the bikini with uh of course with jabba yeah. you uh-huh, know uh-huh. and uh you know and that's the first time that you see luke really confident like as a jedi right he's like it's your last chance bro i mean he's tied up they're about to push yeah. him into that thing in the hole and luke's just like dude oh and that's uh, on the on the sarlacc pit yeah where where baba fett goes right in, right, you right, know? right right and uh, luke is like on the on the plank and he's like it's your last chance java what's up free and, us or and, die and java's like and he just he takes care of business and that's the first time that you really see luke confident I Jedi, love sequence. you know i love that sequence yeah, me especially too. when he gives away the the, the droids and yeah give what gift yeah trippy was like what, what do you mean? Good? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And Greetings, that's, old man. And it's the first time you me to introduce myself. It's also I'm the first time you see Luke in full control of his. These are not the droids you're looking for. A Jedi you knight. Know, he's a totally a Jedi in knight, control you know? of himself. Yeah. The Fortuna goes, you know. Yeah. But, it, but my favorite part of Jedi is is when the Emperor is like pushing his buttons. Yeah. Because there's so much going on. That that's from an editing point of view beautifully yeah. executed yeah there's so much going on they're trying to blow up the the satellite dish in, at the moon to and keep then, the and then they found out that they already knew and there it was basically a trap mm-hmm. but at the same time there's the attack on the second death star but the shields are still up yep so now they're getting smashed all over the place and then in the midst of that the the emperor is like yeah do it strike me down like yeah dude there's so much tension all over the place yeah. i love that i love and that the fact and, and when you see that the emperor doesn't give a shit about darth vader at all he's not focused fully on luke and he wants him to kill darth he wants him to kill your father you know the whole thing i mean that just shows that the the, the the even the music yeah the even evil. the piece that that's the only piece in the in the entire film the the three original films that has a core and like voices mm-hmm. in the background and because then Luke like held up all the way through until Vader said like you have a sister, yeah, <laughs> sister, and that's where he's like oh shit, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's where he loves it. And yeah. then that music when they, he start fighting Vader for real, yeah, and then the Emperor is like ah, it's yeah. it's brilliant. No, it brilliant. is. So Solo or Jedi? Jedi. I have to say Jedi. And we I, talked ourselves into it, right? <laughs> I really like Solo. Okay, uh, Rogue One versus the Book of Boba Fett. Rogue One, love Rogue without one. hesitation. I love. I Rogue didn't one. like the book of Boba Fett. I thought it was Power Rangers on on yeah. ayahuasca trip. Yeah. Attack of the Clones or Andor? Attack of the Clones. I didn't like Andor. Okay. So now we move into the second round. <laughs> okay. So you've got Empire Strikes Back versus Revenge of the Sith. Oh my God, you motherfucker! I didn't pick this. This is just not. This is random. Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. Of course, I can't. That's a strong contender. Yeah. Okay. A New Hope versus Ashoka. A New Hope. And I really like Ahsoka. Well... Is it Ahsoka I, or is it Ashoka? I, either or. I think both ways are fine. But you know what? The problem with it... I, I have to be honest. I'm a Rebel fan. I love Rebels. Yeah. I saw it twice. Both with my kid in different stages. So we, we had... We cry with Kane and die and everything. Mm-hmm. So it was really good to see a live action version of that. But I didn't like the zombie things. Mm-hmm. Like, like the zombie stormtroopers. I thought that was stupid. All right, big boy. The Mandalorian versus Return of the Jedi. Jedi. Jedi? I'm sorry for Mando. I really like Mando, but Jedi can be Jedi. And Rogue One versus Attack of the Clones. I love Attack of the Clones, dude, because it, it really deals a lot with 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 boba fett with boba fett like I, you get Django with Django sorry with right. Django fett and there's a great battle scene between the oh, arena with Geonosis yeah and then obi-wan versus you know when he shoots with thing and they're fighting each other and, and you get to see a little bit of the fett well, arsenal and then and there's there's natalie borman wearing that white thing yeah that... yeah and they had good battle scenes and it was like i love attack of the clones so do you go attack of the clones or do you, i love rogue one too man Rogue One. Yeah, right. Me too. I can't. I'm sorry for AOTC, but Rogue One was was a love letter to Star Wars. All right, we got to the we're we're in the final four. You ready? Why are you doing this to me? Final four, Empire Strikes Back versus A New Hope. 
Empire Strikes Back. Really? Yeah. Dude, the battle of Hoth. I can tell you so many things. Bespin was so, so well executed. Boba Fett. This is where Boba Fett actually comes in. He's not good to me, Dad. Yeah. Like, you know. Yeah. Land, Han Solo. Dude, I love Empire Strikes Back. But A New Hope affected me so much that it's hard for me to like, you know, because it just changed everything for me. But no, I get it. Empire Strikes Back over over, over A New Hope. Um, Return of the Jedi versus Rogue One. I have to go with Jedi. I love Rogue One. It's I really hard. love Rogue One. It's hard to kill Rogue One because that that final scene when Vader comes in at the Corellian Corbett and he starts like blasting through everyone, try to get the plans. Mm -hmm. That little piece before any hope I was that you get to see Vader. Like I remember seeing that in the movie theaters and like fucking tearing up. Like, yeah. Like that red lightsaber and then the breathing and I'm like my god that's... and then he goes berserk on these people and go like what did just happen yeah <laughs> what did just happen yeah 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 so that, and it's I'm, brilliant I hate you for putting me in this position but Jedi I, I have to vote for Jedi because yeah. that's where I grew up with Rogue One is great for me because it's it deals with the building of the of the Death Star uh -huh. you know and they, they they kidnap this engineer kill his wife the daughter's the one that escapes and she's the one that comes back with you know, with Diego Luna, with Andor, you know. I always said, like, you know, people criticize the mouse agenda of, of now having strong female characters as leads and representing um, minorities and all that. And, and I'm all down for that. But there are ways to do it. Like, I mm -hmm. don't think um, what they did with Ray and these yeah. newer films were the, the actual proper way to do it. But a perfect example of how to properly place that type of items that you want to place into culture is Rogue One. Yeah. Strong female lead. Yep. Hispanics represented, mm -hmm. minorities represented, and it's a love letter to Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. No, and it's a simple, it's a simple yet exciting story. You know, we got to stop this. The, the dad is doing it under duress. He's not, you know, under, under protest, you know, he's, and then when the, when the father dies and the daughter's like, that's it. Yeah. That's it. We're going, we're yeah. going. Diego Luna. <laughs> We're gonna go kick some ass now. I mean, I, I love Rogue One. Not only that, uh, Rogue One did something that I thought it's it's brilliant within the the arc film because if you think about it, the Death Star it's this massive. It's like a like an aircraft carrier. Yeah. What we have mm -hmm. right in in our in our navy, and then but if I tell you that if you throw a little rock in one little corner of that aircraft carrier, the whole thing is gonna blow up. You're gonna go like, really? They spent so much money making this gigantic thing. And they left that flaw that can easily be exposed and, and destroyed and all that. And now this this movie tells you why turns it's there. it around. It's yeah. purposely there. It's yeah. beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, it beautiful. is. Beautiful. It is. Championship game. Here we go. <sighs> Empire Strikes Back versus Return of the Jedi. The not the Dallas Cowboys, for sure. <laughs> no, not in a championship game. Not for the last 28 years. Thank you. So Empire Strikes Back versus Return of the Jedi. The Dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> Empire Strikes Back. Empire Strikes Back is the number yeah. one movie. And for me, it is. Dude, I accept it because I loved it too. But my favorite out of the original nine uh -huh. is The Force Awakens. And let me tell you why. What? It's The Force Awakens. What? Because J.J. Abrams. This just went sour. J.J. Abrams grew up as a Star Wars fan. No, and he's not. He resurrected. He, when you look at one, two, and three, they no, went. It's not. That's a poorly executed version of. Let me introduce you to a new cast, but I'm going to use the old one so you can fall in love with the newer ones. But they didn't work. When you look at one, two, and three, they went crazy with CG. They went crazy with CG. They lost that charm of four, five, six, where everything looked old. The 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 aliens were semantics the aliens were Semantic. puppets it's all about the story everything was so sleek and everything was so like clean and jj abrams went back to the original old school everything looked dirty again everything looked like four five Even and the six script was very dirty was four five and six and then dude they forgot lando and then... <laughs> they're like there's this fucking rolling stone picture <laughs> of the, the finally the cast reunited they even brought a fucking r2d2 as a prop to pay homage to that 
and then out of nowhere the, the, the formerly known as twitter now x comes out hashtag where is lando and they, they went like i know this for a fact they went like oh my god we forgot fucking lando yeah shit nobody interviewed can you imagine that that was the first time they read the script and if you look at the picture, Mark Hamill is sitting there. Right. So imagine Mark Hamill going through every single page, waiting for his but shot. Oh, dude, but that and ending, then the last but thing, that ending is, Luke shows up, but that, and we roll credits. That ending. Imagine is, him like going, I have no lines dude. on this film. Yeah, dude. No lines? No, but I wasn't this, looking at it from a producer. I was looking at it as a, as a fan. That ending, Even worse, that ending is amazing. That's the look that you've been, what were you saying? That this, this is a look that no. I've been waiting to see for 35 years. And he's an old guy that's not going to say a word and you're going to roll credits and make me wait for a year and a half? Fuck you. No, nah, dude, I loved it. I love Ray as a character. I love Finn. I love Poe. Look, I believe, I firmly believe. I love those the characters. The only way for me to, to make laments or make peace with that film is that if we take out those characters and, and send them on their own without that connection with the old cast, mm -hmm. then maybe they stand a chance. The fact that they use them to hand over the torch so so evil, like for example, the first six films, the vehicles that carries the narrative happens to be the droids. Right. All of them. Yep. From the get-go. Mm -hmm. Or to get the, the, the Death Star plans, He's the one that connects to Luke. He's the one that connects Obi Wan to to Leia, and so on. And so every single film, if you look at it, mm -hmm. the droids are the one telling the story. Mm -hmm. In Force Awakens, R two is literally covered with a blanket all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. Tripia comes out twice to say two stupid things, and then it's all about BB eight. BB eight's great. BB eight's great, and then I also love. On, on The Force Awakens, I love uh, um, Kylo Ren. He's a great character, dude. Love Kylo Ren. His, his a stubborn boy. Like, oh my God, I need fucking, to get my thing. I'm going to destroy my room, his Dad. His trigger I temper. I have issues. His trigger, his short trigger temper, his his uh, his connection, of course, to his grandfather and how the fact that he kills Han Solo is fucked. Uh, but those Harrison Ford requested that. The, He's like, I'm going to do this fucking film. You're gonna pay me well, it worked 10 10 percent of the box office, and you have to kill this fucking character because I don't want to do this thing again. Well, it worked because it did not work. Everyone is pissed, the, everyone hated the it. The whole theater went, oh, I mean, it was right, but amazing. The, no, the reason why the theater did that is that we, we were in awe and shock <laughs> of how dare you to kill the most iconic character no. in movie. The History. Force Awakens. The Force just busting my butt. Favorite. No, just pushing my butt. It's That's my a, favorite. The same thing that I do with the Dallas Cowboys. If I you can't choose, if I cannot choose a New Hope because the way it affected me, it's like I do this all the time because I, I, I I'm a big Tarantino fan, you know, yeah. and I always rank his movies, and it's always hard for me to to not call Pulp Fiction his best just because he changed the way well, movies were made. Let's do the same thing with Tarantino. I'm gonna go wicked. Bill Fiction. Uh, what's the name of the lady? Kill Bill? No. Oh, but that's a good one. Um, Kill Bill 1 and Kill Bill 2. No, there's the movie, the lady that is a um, police officer, the detective. Jackie Brown? Jackie Brown. Jackie Brown. Inglorious Bastards? Love the film. Django Unchained? Django. What else? Hateful Eight. Reservoir Dogs. Ooh. Hold on. Let me put this on the side. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Reservoir Dogs. What else? Uh, Kill Bill 1 and 2. I got uh, those. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Four of them. Uh huh. I think that's I need, it. I need four more. No, that's it. Oh, uh, True Romance. Uh, on Can a, we put From Dust Till Down in there? Dust Till Down? Robert Rodriguez type of link, right? He helped. Uh, oh, more like help. Natural Born Killers? From Dust Till Down, yeah. Uh, he wrote it. Oliver Stone directed it. He yeah. hates it. Um, and uh, uh, Grindhouse, uh, Planet Terror, uh, Grindhouse. That's, that's a Robert Rodriguez film. No, because he did one. He did one with Kurt Russell where he's a stuntman, and Robert Rodriguez directed the other one. Well. Yeah, but 
Okay. Okay, so let's just start. Pulp Fiction or Jackie Brown? Pulp Fiction. Pulp, I hate Jackie Brown. That's my least favorite Tarantino movie. Dude, the music. No, it's great. The music in Jackie Brown is a masterpiece. No, it is. But I just... The whole sequence when... when um, De Niro. Is De Niro, right? Yeah. De Niro is killing the, the blonde girl. <laughs> yes. the fucking beautiful sequence, man. That thing is, is a piece of art. Yeah. No, I'm missing one film here. I'm missing one film. Let's just put Grindhouse 2. Or whatever. That's okay. good. Grindhouse 2 with versus Hateful 8. Hateful 8. <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson using great, the N word. <laughs> great mystery. <laughs> yeah, and Leo. Leo. I have a high respect for Leo ever since that film. Leo, Leonardo DiCaprio. He's not in that movie. No. That, what's the name of that film? That's the Django. That's yeah. Django. Django Unchanged. That's I'm missing characters. And Headful Eight. Um, yeah, Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel L. Jackson. They're they're trapped in that in that. In, in the, the in, in the, the cabin in the cabin with the storm they shoot they shoot each other and yeah, yeah, yeah. Samuel L just slowly picks it apart right 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 you killed yeah, her great you, script you killed many yeah. yeah Kill Bill one uh, or Once Upon the Thing in Hollywood <sighs> I really like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood what I how loved it I loved it because he changed history again I loved how he changes history he killed he he brings in the Manson family I like family. a few scenes but I'm a big Tarantino fan I like a few scenes but then, then I, I know but Brad Pitt's now. Brad Pitt's great in it you know and the whole thing with uh, with uh, Bruce Lee when he's trying to pick a fight with Bruce yeah. Lee yeah you're just my so hands are registered weapons. That yeah. means if we fight and I kill you, I go to jail. Anybody kills and go to jail. It's yeah. called manslaughter. Manslaughter. I think you're just full of shit. <laughs> what 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 is the what are my choices? Kill Bill. Kill Bill. I gotta go with Kill Bill. Of course. Kill Bill one. Yeah. So I need another film. I need another film. Um You have Kill Bill Two in there? Yeah. Let's see. It's Reservoir Dogs, it's uh, Pulp Fiction, it's Jackie Brown, it's Kill Bill 1, Kill Bill 2, mm -hmm. then it's uh, uh, Inglorious Bastards, I got it. and then it's Django Unchained, mm -hmm. and then it's The Hateful Eight, and then it's Once Upon a Time. Those are his nine movies. And then you added True Romance, which he wrote. Which well, is... I guess we can move up Kill Bill 2. So Kill Bill 1 and Kill Bill 2. 1. 1. Although Kill Bill Two has the great sequence where he, he she learns from the the, 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 the Chinese master. No, 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 the whole analogy with the Hadman and, and that's and, in the six point thing where she, the way yeah. she kills Robert Carradine. And it, isn't that the one with the animated part, the story of? No, the, that's part one. That's part one. Where you yeah. they show how she became an assassin. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go with one, dude. I'm going to have to go with one. Beautiful. Pulp Fiction of Hateful Eight. Pulp Fiction. All right. So we have this. Pulp Fiction or Kill One. Kill Bill One. Pulp Fiction. Of course. Pulp. Okay. Now let's do the start. Unglorious Bastards or Django. Oh, that's, that hurts. <laughs> Dude, I love Django so much because it's such a great, you know, hero thing. You, you love to see a slave just... Yeah, yeah. You that's know, the one that I meant with the, the, the DiCaprio. Leo, is, DiCaprio is was great, incredible in there. And Jamie Foxx, Samuel L. Jackson, and the Jamie whole Jamie Foxx is amazing yeah. in it. He's the, to see him grow. The only part that gets me, and he did it for comedies when he puts him in that little blue boy outfit, mm -hmm. you know, because he chooses his own. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't agree with that. I, he should have looked cool the whole movie, but I guess you know. And then I love Don Johnson. Yeah. That whole scene with the holes, yeah. you know. <laughs> But Samuel L. Jackson famously said when he read the script, he's like, you want me to play the most hated mm -hmm. uh, N-word in, in movie yeah. history? And he was like... Yeah, the house the house, and, the house, down. The, the house <laughs> N-word, dude. Yeah, that, those were the ones. But that, no, but that character... They, uh, and apparently, there's a lot of stuff that they didn't make it into the room because apparently it was not even nastier. Yeah. You know, that character was horrendous. The, no, but Jamie Foxx as a slaver was also because he was a sellout, you know? Right. He was a slaver. He he would tell them where they were. He would tell right. when they would escape. Oh, he's over there. Yeah. Like, uh, so this is Django versus who? Glorious Bastards, which is a masterpiece. I know, a dude. A masterpiece. No, Christoph Waltz is amazing. That opening scene, dude, where he Shoshana. makes... Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow, so I mean, Shana. amazing. That scene when he's speaking in multiple languages, yeah. that I'm a fan of that guy ever since. No, me too. 
Yeah. No, me too. I know you have people on the road. Oh my that. God! And the actor who starts crying. I mean, no, and, the, and Brad Pitt on that film is amazing. Amazing. He's amazing. speaking Italian. Well, where, yeah. you know, yeah. Where, where, where. yeah, yeah, Margarito. Margarito. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking great. You no, know, and that sequence that's the, that shootout at the bar yeah. with the three fingers. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful bird. Beautiful. I'm gonna go with *Inglorious Bastards*. Just because I'm, I'm a World War II fan, so you gotta go. That there. film is. Yeah. Yeah. So I have one of my favorite Tarantino films: *Reservoir Dogs*. And from *Dust Till Now*. *Reservoir Dogs*. <sighs> I like I like *From Dust Till Dawn*, and I like Tarantino as an actor in that because he plays that know, crazy. Crazy ass. The it's sex like predator right, guy and Clooney is perfect as his brother, you know. But Reservoir Dogs, man, you got to, you've got to. Dude, I remember vividly being at the movies and and seeing Tom Hayek turning into a vampire and going like, "What the hell did you just happen?" Yeah. <laughs> How the film goes, yeah. bananas from that point on. I go. What is happening? Now? It was working as it was, and then just it just went crazy, you know, it with was, the vampires. It goes it insane. Went... And Chich Marine like pussy, yeah. pussy, pussy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 I know, I know. I'm having a hard time accepting this because Reservoir. When I was studying, like that was that was the film. To yeah, study. man. Dialogue that script the as way, a writer. The, the way that is structured is as know. a writer. Those just those long scenes of them talking about a Madonna video or whatever. It's just like, like picking the colors. Yeah. Why do I get to be Mr. Pink? Yeah, Mr. Brown sounds <laughs> like <laughs> Mr. Shit, you know, and, and they're just perfect, you know. And this guy saying, I remember that line. I actually use that line. That's a line. You, if you're gonna use that line, you're gonna have to kill yourself afterwards mm -hmm. because you go like. Are you going to bark all day or are you actually going to bite? Are you going to bark Bro, all day, little doggy? If you say that shit to me, I have to kill you now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or are you going to be big mouth? <sighs> I also love how in the Tarantino universe, characters are connected. Yeah. You know, because like Vega. Uh, uh, Vincent Vega. Vincent Vega from Pulp Fiction is the brother of. Yeah. Are you gonna are you gonna bark all day, little dog? Because uh -huh. he was uh, he was Vic Be Vic Vega. Uh -huh. So Victor Vega and Vincent Vega were brothers, and they're both like killers, you know. Sure. From dust till down, dude. Go for it, dude. I'm going with Reservoir. <laughs> Just because the movie changed on me. Okay, so now it, it goes. Now it gets hotter because it goes from Reservoir Dogs against Unglorious Bastards. Uh huh. <laughs> Again, dude. Just because I'm a fan of World War II and oh my god, I'm Can gonna I believe that we're gonna I'm, roll out Reservoir Dogs. I'm gonna go with Inglorious Bastards, dude. Just got better characters, you know. Dude, the breakfast scene in Reservoir Dogs when you're like yeah. planning out the yeah. No, dude, and the whole storyline with uh, Tim Roth, where he's the undercover cop and he's practicing the story, mm -hmm. and Tarantino cuts to a live action of him in the bathroom. That was his first big break, if I'm not mistaken. The first movie he directed, yeah. yeah. No, 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 Tim Roth. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, he did a lot of great stuff there, and that's when he first started doing that whole jumping around thing that he perfected in Pulp Fiction, you know? But the thing is that Unglorious Master is a fucking masterpiece, man. It is. That, that whole... The blowing up the cinema with Hitler inside and and, and Christoph Waltz is a revelation dude he's a revelation that's a bingo is that how you say it you just say bingo just <laughs> Brad, <a> bingo <laughs> Brad Pitt <laughs> so Inglourious Bastards I would go with Inglourious Bastards over Reservoir Dogs which is so horrible. that puts Inglourious Bastards against Pulp Fiction uh huh <laughs> Pulp Fiction I'm not gonna even Pulp Fiction. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction. When I went to see Pulp Fiction, dude, I was in advertising and I was writing and I was I had side projects. Like I had a novel and I was trying to write a screenplay and the whole thing. And I remember going to see Inglorious Bastards with my then wife and with another couple. Four of us went to dinner, had a couple of drinks, and then we went to go see Pulp Fiction. And no, nobody outside of me knew what we were going to go see. I was a Tarantino fan, you know, 
And they're like, "What are we gonna go see? We want to go see Braveheart." I'm like, "No, no, no, no. We're not. Braveheart. Gonna, we're not gonna see Braveheart. We're Braveheart. gonna. We're gonna go watch Pulp. Well, who's who's in it? Oh my god! And like John Travolta. Who? Really? Yeah, they, got, they all guy from Greece. Yeah. Man. I'm like, dude, let's go. Oh, well, he was out. He was like, got him. No, he, he got him he back couldn't in. Couldn't get a job, and no. that was his big comeback. He had done. Look who's talking. One and two, where he was. Right. Not, he was the voice of the baby. Right. You know, right. and that's all he had done since whatever. I know. So, uh, have you ever seen Blowout? Yeah, of oh, shit. So of course. So good. Anyway, so uh, no one knew what they were walking into except for me. And I hadn't seen the movie, but I knew what it, what it was. You were in for a joyride, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So we, we went in, we sat down, and the wife of my buddy was like super religiosa. She was super. Oh, my God. And all of a sudden, she's watching ass raping, and she's watching, you know, all these crazy, the overdose. Yeah, Samuel, Samuel L. Jackson, Ezekiel 29, yeah, 17. The over, the, the, righteous yeah. man. The, the overdose scene and the like whole the thing. The the they walked the overdose out. scene with Uma Thurman is yeah. fucking. No, it's amazing. The tense, the, yeah. the, 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 it's. And the greatest line by Rosanna Arquette when she finally comes out of it. That was so trippy, dude. Yeah. I mean, that was <laughs> awesome. So when they walked out, they were all in shock. Because they were, no, my name is the, the Lord. Lord when, when I, I laid my, my vengeance upon thee. <sighs> blank, blank, blank. I did a, I did a Lego version of that. Did you? With the, with, and, and I mix it up with um, DC characters. Okay, and okay. My Marvel versus DC thing. I'll send you the link. Okay. I did a Lego version of that worked out love it perfectly love it like, can't wait to know. see it yeah mm. I'm, I'm he goes that my girlfriend is a vegetarian but I, you know you can always enjoy a really good burger. you know how they call it <laughs> which more or less makes me a vegetarian right. <laughs> so, you know how they call it quarter pounder and cheese and roll yeah with cheese do you know why because <laughs> of the metric look at the big brain on brad yeah. <laughs> it's like the so big brain on brad he's yeah, yeah. Drink Samuel L. Jackson fucking the perfect bully move where he just yeah, drinks yeah. his entire soda while yeah. looking at him <laughs> without like, without twitching yeah. what are you, you gonna do about it i just drank your soda uh -huh. such a schoolyard you know you're dead such a schoolyard and thing. the reason why they wanted to kill they, they wanted to kill them is even crazier because they try to rape the boss you know that's the story right i mean they 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 stole from him they try to rape him now apparently if i recall if i recall correctly the reason why he has like a like a bandage in the back mm -hmm. is because these kids try to rape him that's why he goes like does he looks like a bitch does Marcellus Wallace looks like a bitch? No, he doesn't. Like, I always, why are you trying to rape him? Why are you trying to fuck him like a uh -huh. bitch? I always took it like fuck him over. I didn't, I didn't take it as a... No, according to something that I read, mm -hmm. I might, you know, someone's going to burn me in the comments. He's supposed they, they actually try to rape him. That's... I always took it as fuck him over. Like, he gets raped. Right. What's in the case? By, by, the, but by the... But what's in the case? Bring out the gimp. But what's in the case? Well, nobody knows. There's no, so I know, many, but... There's so many theories So I always took that. it as that they stole from him. They kept, you know, whether it was heroin or whatever the hell it was, you know, they put that light on it just to make it, you know, look whatever. But I always took it as, well, you try to fuck him like a bitch, like fuck him over. Is how right, I right, right. Like so, screw him. Yeah. Which so, also can sound. The physical rape sexual. thing is crazy. I don't think those kids would do that. I, I mean, read that. I read that once. That sounds insane to me. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. It's rape. So, that's the thing. That's that's the, the, the counter argument. It's like, well, how can you rape this big, you know, black guy? Well, it happens yeah. down the road in the film yeah. by the gimp. Yeah, and Tarantino coined that that scene in the movie theater was like, yeah, what the fuck is that? And Tarantino coined the phrase "going medieval." Right, um, go to medieval. That, he ass. coined that, and that now people <laughs> use that all the time. Yeah, and a, a line that I use from that scene also all the time is, "You've just lost your LA privileges." Uh -huh. You know, <laughs> I don't want to see you anymore. <laughs> And one time I had to fire somebody that I didn't want to fire, but I had to because he had been fucking up a lot on, on the production. So uh -huh. I, I had to fire him. So I said, dude, listen, I'm not going to make it official. I'm not going to make it official. Oh, my God. You did not use the light. But you just lost your Univision privileges. <laughs> you know? I don't want you. I don't want to see you around the cup. I don't want to see you around the sets. I don't want to see you anything. And if I see you trying to like whatever, I'm going to make it official and put the letter in with HR that you that you're fired. That's hilarious. But just go away, dude. That's go away. That's hilarious to throw a whole fiction yeah. line into you just, that you just, Yeah, you just lost your set privileges. Get out of here. That's hilarious. <laughs> and he goes, okay, okay. And he left, you know. He, he left. He that knew. whole sequence with Seb and the, and, the, yeah. and the game is just insane. Yeah. It's just insane. And then Bruce Willis picking up, what do I use to fight back? And then just looking up and then coming yeah i love that i love the process from a chainsaw to a hammer yeah, escalating and then he finally signs it he sees it and he's like oh 
And the way he comes in and brilliantly he goes, Hua! and then zla, you know, and he kills the. Do you know, there was a film, I can't remember the name, made by Quentin. And it was, it was like a straight to video thing, mm-hmm. a straight to VHS, that it was about the, ta- the taxi driver. Um, Esmeralda. That was. Um, Esmeralda Villalobos. Right. That was obsessed with death and everything yeah. and blah, blah, blah. It was, there's a film Holy shit. about her. Um, where where they go deep into her obsession with with the death and, and blah, blah 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 blah, and it's very Mexican oriented, holy shit, right? And then Lupita Ferrer has a role in there. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna spoil. Should I? What? I spoil it. I spoil this to you. I, I'm I'm unspoilable, dude. People give me the spoiler. I'm, it makes me want to watch it more. You can't. I'm I'm unspoilable. Someone grabs a sword mm-hmm. and takes her head off. Lupita Ferrer. Holy yes. shit. And I'm like, oh, wait, that's Lupita Ferrer from my country. And then I see her head rolling and I go, what the fuck? Wow. <laughs> yeah. I didn't, I've never, I've yeah. never. I wanna, it was a straight to, to tape. I want to see that. Straight to tape. I started showing Esteban uh, the Tarantino library. Uh-huh. So we started with Reservoir Dogs and then we went to Pulp Fiction. Uh-huh. And the, out of everything, what he loved the most was... Who's Zeb? Zeb's dead, baby. Uh-huh. Zeb's dead. Zeb's dead. <laughs> that's what he came out. That's my favorite part. I'm like, dude, really? <laughs> that's when your favorite I, I part? Sh- I waited for Gus to be 15 so we can see full fiction. And then and the the whole um, overdose thing like yeah. took a hit on him. He was like like this the whole time, yeah. especially in that in that moment when he's about to. Yeah. To, to, and they put know, the little, little red little, mark and he's waiting. That whole tension, he was like this. Yeah. And But then he's like, no wonder you guys are so messed up. Like, yeah. That's the type of stuff that you used to watch back in the day. You yeah. No, no Esteban, you... Esteban kept stopping the movie to like take a walk. Like, <laughs> like he would. I need a break. He was like, Dad, hold on. He would stop it and he would leave the room and he would come back with like a juice box and some, <laughs> some takis, you know. Takis. He's like, all right. And then we keep watching. He's like, Dad, hold on, hold on. And then we take Let a walk. get some takis so I can like. Yeah, yeah he'd walk feel. out. Yeah, he came in with an apple, you know. Like he That's kept hilarious. Like, he kept trying. He, he took like four walks during the movie. He stopped Pulp Fiction four times, <laughs> you know. I he loved it. I you. He loved it. Well, Jerry, it's been a pleasure to. to Brother, this, this was amazing. To Thank do you this so publicly because that's what we always do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People don't know, but we always do. I've been doing this for years, like yeah. talking shit like this while we were at work. Production's so. a lot of waiting, you know. So we we would do all we would do this all the time. So I'm glad I got it out of my system. The Force Awakens is the. We're in agreement that The Force Awakens is the best movie. No, no, no. There's no agreement <laughs> on that. And fuck you for that. You're the one saying that no, you can't. You, you won't get a uh, sound by that on me with that statement ever, ever. I will call it AI and say that's AI bullshit. I I, uh, I accept your 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 uh, your Empire Strikes Back because it is a great great fucking. I movie. know that deep it down is. in your brilliant writer's mind you did this whole thing just to coin me into that phrase of the force awakens whatever <laughs> i know that that was a strategy i was actually just curious better than that. i was just curious yeah, i right. was just curious <laughs> but i'm glad thank you for having me brother i really love thank i love you. you very much and thank you so much it's great spending time with thank you, you. Thank i love you, it brother thank you let's do this again yes sir right. yes sir i really hope you like this episode and don't forget we did a bunch of episodes in the past so just go and search the channel and check them out as well because there's a lot of a lot of plastic chats and a lot of toy talk and i'm pretty sure you're going to enjoy it